Morning. Councilor Gould will be Councilor Gravel, Councilor Turco for Councilor Garabedian, and Councilor Charest for Councilor McGinn. And the first item on the agenda is the discontinuance permit application for Park Place Mobile Home. And, uh, sir, did you want to come up and say a few words regarding this, sir? Come right over here, please. Yes, Joseph Primo, P R I M O. Um, uh, I am the secretary on the board of directors. Okay. And to assist me is Barbara Seeker, S I C A. She's the director on the board as well. And just very quickly, if you could just. I understand that the the ownership is transferring to the uh, park. The, the well, what were you were the tenants? Now you're the co cooperative owners. Yes, as of May 5th, we purchased it as of May 5th from Paul Patakis. So we went before the rent control board last um, Wednesday. Uh, they approved it. So now we're here before the council. So we would just uh, really appreciate a yes vote on that so we could get started and do what we have to do with the park and the cleanup and everything else. Okay, thank you. Councilors, okay. do you have any questions, comments? If not, what is your wish? Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, Council, could you receive the rent control recommendation, which is? I think it's eight, eight or I, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Item 8J in tonight's. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, any opposed to the vote now? Uh, Councilor Gould. Oh, I was just looking for the, uh, the, um, with the help of the clerk, if I'd like to move forward on this, Tim, if you can give me some guidance as to the verbiage on. I think, Council, if you look at item 8J, it would be similar to what the rent control did, so. Basically, we're looking for approval uh, for a discontinuance permit for uh, Park Place um, regarding the application of Park Place Cooperative Incorporated um, from Park Place Mobile Home Park. If I may, Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, per the last paragraph of the uh, enclosed packet, Tim, would you like me to read that whole? Um, I recommend that the board hereby determine that the issuance of the discontinuous permit by the Peabody City Council would allow the sale of the park to a resident-owned housing cooperative corporation would not aggravate the shortage of safe, decent, and affordable mobile home park accommodations in the city of Peabody and therefore based upon the foregoing findings and conclusions and all of the evidence presented at the hearing recommend that this, our council issue a discontinuance permit to the cooperative pursuant to section 18-58 of the code of the city of Peabody, Mass. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Councilors, you heard the motion. Councilor manning Martin. Yes, just a question. I see that Mr. Ted Neri is the chair of the Rent Control Board. Who are the other members? I don't see any list or any vote that was taken. Not sure off the top of my head, Councillor. I, I, Paul Ritchie is a member. Um, I'm not positive of the entire membership of the Rent Control Board. Um, this but was signed by the chairman after they held up. That's the why I know Ted's on it because he right. signed the, the yes. recommendation. They, yeah. So, 
the entire board or a quorum of the board met and the, I see that the, no one showed in opposition. There was no, no one on record in opposition. No. Uh, um, no. Uh, that, that's what the rec that's what the um, document from the control board says. So, is that accurate? It was unanimous. And and no one showed an opposition. No public. Not at all. Nobody spoke in opposition. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Am I, am I done? Yep. Okay. Well, yes. thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay. Council is on that motion. Um, Eddie still going to vote on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Roll Councilors call. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charest. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Jack. Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, Councilor McGinn has joined us, so Councilor Charest, you're off the hook for, <laughs> for the next item. And you're all set. And, <laughs> and the next item on the agenda, Councilors, is. Um, to authorize uh, the mayor to enter into a license agreement with Maritimes and Northeast Pipeline regarding maintenance of existing pipeline located on the IG bike path in the vicinity of Glen Drive. And John, if you want to come forward, please state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is John N. Bonsall. I'm an attorney with the uh, law firm of Keegan Whirlin LLP, and I represent Maritimes and Northeast Pipeline. Uh, Maritimes uh, is responsible for the safe operation of the existing uh, interstate gas pipeline system uh, that runs through this area. Uh, it's a pipe that was constructed back in the late 19, uh, 1990s. Uh, in doing some of its routine inspection, it determines that additional uh, cathodic protection is required for the pipeline. Um, I want to state right up front, this does not increase the capacity of the existing pipe. It does not add any additional metal, per se, to the pipe. Uh, all this is is a maintenance project. What cathodic protection uh, systems do is they sacrifice themselves so that the integrity of the existing pipe is maintained. And what I mean by that is steel is subject to corrosion. A cathodic protection system essentially takes the corrosive materials away from the pipe and goes to an anode bed. The anode bed is made up of different uh, pieces of metal which sacrifice themselves so as to maintain the integrity of the pipeline. So this is a maintenance safety related project. What it involves is the installation of uh, the anode beds um, on a parcel of land off of the bike path that's owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and then the installation of, an, of a, basically an electric cable that literally is about that wide in diameter. This is not a very big, particularly big facility uh, that's trenched in adjacent to the, the bike path itself. Um, it would be about 1,700 feet in length. Uh, we would connect um, to an existing power source uh, near number 51 Glen Drive where we have an easement with the landowner at that property to access uh, along the side of their property the electric service on Glen Drive and then it would take us probably five to eight days to do the actual installation. Um, assuming weather is good, so roughly in, in two weeks or less, we're in and out and done. Um, the work itself would take up, primarily for, for safety purposes, uh, we would cordon off one lane of the bike lane. So the bike lane would always be open, or the bike path would always be open along that area behind Glen Drive but one lane would be cordoned off more for the protection of the bikers and the workers than the work is actually extending onto the bike path. So the bike path would be open for, um, you know, as normal, except it would be uh, neck down for about 1,700 feet for about a five to 10 day period of time. So again, this is a maintenance project and we're just looking for uh, the council to authorize the mayor to enter into a license uh, so that we can, in fact, do the installation of the cable that's associated with this project. I have a lot more background material, et cetera, but I thought I'd start with the verbal overview and respond to questions at that point and provide whatever additional information the council may need. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir, thank you for being here. Um, you will not be entering any uh, household yards. You won't be no Ac accessing any neighbors Ex except for the one property with the landowner where we have a, 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 a established easement agreement with them to put the the electric service through 
okay? And um, any work done on the path will bring it back to its original condition, if not better? Absolutely. Okay. And um, I think that's all right now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's just building on a point from Councilor Gould um, through you to the petitioner. You, you said you, that the bike path will be disrupted for a period of time in terms of going down to one lane and that you will there be any repairs necessary to it? Or is there actually going to be any work taking place when within the, the physical confines the electric, of the bike path? When the electric trans, when the the electric connection is made, I believe at that point they will have to uh, go underneath the uh, uh, the bike path. I think the idea is to try to shoot it underneath and not actually have to open cut the bike path. But if they did open cut it, they would obviously make the, the necessary repairs. So it's pretty limited in terms of actual actually trenching or anything. Oh, it's it's all adjacent nice. adjacent to the Correct. bike path, not on the bike path. Correct. Correct. Thank you. And and in, in terms of the power source, this is a, a low voltage. Correct. Power. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Turco. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the petitioner. Um, how deep is the trench um, in question? I, I think it. I think it's going to be something like 18 to 24 inches, or up to 36 inches uh, deep, so as to make sure that it doesn't get impacted at any point in time. Okay. So there's no there's no danger of anybody. Um, um, recreationally using no. the path that no. Uh, no. that's a great question we've had that in the past and there's no no impact or danger to anybody okay thank you very much okay. further questions councillors okay uh, one more and then we'll okay council Manning Martin um, yes a question from one of the audience uh, to share is that uh, the question is what about the rest of the pipeline it runs through a uh, Brooksby farm and what water area? It comes down from the bike path through the water supply. Through the water supply and also Brooksby Farm. What about the, the rest of the? We're not touching that, but the cathodic protection system we're installing here will provide protection to that entire segment of the existing pipe. Thank you. Councilor Sinowitz. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, I didn't. So it's, it is my ward, so it would be nice that if somebody had let me know, there's nothing to do with John. Me and John had a nice conversation on the phone. So having said that, I, I was told that letters went out to all the residents in the area, so I'm, I'm glad they knew, but I didn't. But having said that, um, obviously this maintenance has to be done. Correct. Okay. So I read the lease, and just a few questions. Where are you tapping in for your electricity? Um, on Glen Drive, right adjacent to 51 Glen Drive. Okay. I did talk to the Electric Light PMLP. They're not aware of any of this. Of, uh, I talked to one of the engineers in terms of you tapping into their electricity. Is there been, you should be talking to them at some point? It was my understanding that that discussion had, it was my understanding that was already worked out, but probably over a year ago at this point. Well, it should be in the lease, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, we obviously would not, we need permission to be able to connect into the electric service at that point. But you're doing it through Peabody. I thought we were doing it through Peabody. Yeah, you it's raise possible you could have gone further down and tap in through Middleton. Yeah, no, we, if, since we're in Peabody, then we must be uh, tying into the, the, uh, the Peabody plant. Okay, um, I would confirm that up. Yep. Because the, the engineers didn't know anything, and they're usually the ones that did some work on the bike path. Mm -hmm. uh, so, secondly, um, blasting, when we mentioned this on the phone, so every Thursday at 1 o'clock, uh, they blast, they can blast on Tuesdays if the weather or conditions aren't right. So you have to be aware of that. And those, if there's workers on that day, they're going to have to, everybody has to clear off the path. Mm -hmm. Sirens will go off, they'll block each end of the path and everybody out. So. Yeah. You were kind enough, Council, to raise that to me the other day on the phone. I passed that on to our project manager, so they are already aware of that. Uh, in terms of um, the lease, you know, I'm just reading this. So who came, who wrote this lease? Did you and the city attorneys? I don't see any of the city attorneys here again, so uh, the, the this is a lease we're asked to approve, and I don't see the attorney here. So my question is, who came up with this $5,000 figure? We negotiated that. 
um, with the mayor's office and worked with the city solicitor's office. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, it just, you know, they negotiated it, but $5,000 divided by 25 years isn't a heck of a lot of money for yeah. allow access to our bike path and to do work. So that, I'm just going to make that comment. I think that should have been a little higher, but they negotiated. He's not here to ask, so I can't ask that question. So, um, and Council Gould brought up uh, restoration. So uh, I'm hoping that if maybe it's like a sprinkler, you can put it underneath the, uh, excuse me? Oh, okay. Uh, you can put it underneath the uh, bike path, mm -hmm. like a sprinkler system, and it, instead of having to tear through the, uh, the right. pavement. So I, I hope you can do that. And if, the they do, and if they do do that, then restore it the way it's supposed to be, not like National Grid does. Correct. You know, when they do kind of a, a lazy job and leave cuts all throughout our streets. And I think, um, I think that was it. And... Uh, yeah, okay, good luck. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council. Council Latsoulis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what I'm, what I'm going to say really doesn't relate to you, but I'm saying it for the sake of the Council. Um, the gas company right now is uh, uh, putting a pipeline the length of Tremont Street in the East End, and they've dug up that whole street, and uh, they're going to patch it back up and I'm really not happy with the way this is going. When this is over, I'm going to request the mayor and hopefully you councils to support me to have the gas company repave that whole street uh, because I think for the amount of work they have done and the amount of tearing up that street, um, I, I think it would be a good gesture and, and uh, good working with relation to the city to just put a skim, to, skim coat on the top of the street and make it look uniform instead of making it look like it's been patched up for the past 20 years, which it hasn't. It got um, it got a new uh, new surface about five years ago, and right now it looks like it hasn't been touched in 20 years because of the work the gas company's doing. And I'm only mentioning this so the council will be aware of this when I. When they finish the project, I am going to ask the mayor to have them have the gas company uh, do the whole street. I, no. I can I can support you fully because that's not Maritimes' project. So, I, but I understand yeah, we, uh, we face that a lot. But, Typically, we I, do I, repay the I, entire. I, I, street. I said this had nothing to do with you, but I wanted the council I vote in favor. to be okay. Thank you. I've even got your support on this. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Councilor Gravel. I worry, Jim. You got my support too. You got my support too, Jim. I just wanted to mention. I, mean, I, I think it's a shame when they do that. They they dig up streets and half fill them, and then we're left with potholes and disasters after they plow. Uh, my my question is, when would the uh, construction of this trench begin? Uh, we will provide notice to the council and to the mayor's office. But my guess is it'll probably be in about somewhere between a month from now into early September. We, again, once we have all the authorizations, then we can get, have to go to the contractor to get them scheduled. So I can't give you an exact date right now because obviously we still need favorable action tonight. Only because there, there are a number of activities that are conducted on that bike path, mm -hmm. um, which people already have plans for. Right. Right. And uh, would That's be an nice, excellent point. would be That's nice to let those people know in, in case yep. they have to reroute their, their events. Uh, the other thing is, I, I, I heard uh, Council, although it's difficult to hear, I heard Council Sinowitz talk about blasting. Is there anticipated to be blasting going on? To We're not blasting. There's evidently a quarry located in that okay. area that he's referring to. That's not, that's not Maritimes. I was going to say, it's kind of interesting to blast near a gas pipeline. <laughs> um, so, I'm glad to hear that's not the case. Thank you very much. Yep. You all set, Councilor? Councilors, any further questions? What is your wish? Councillor Gravel. I, I uh, move to authorize the mayor to enter into, into a lease agreement with uh, Maritime and Northeast Pipeline LLC for the purpose of allowing them to maintain in the pipeline itself. So moved. Councillors, you heard the motion. Comments? Roll call. Councillors Manning Martin. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. All set. Thank, Thank you. you.
accept the motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>